In this video, we're going to be talking about how to go from a Thevenin model to a Norton model. And more generally speaking, we're going to be talking about the technique of source transformation. Any linear circuit can be represented with a voltage source and a series resistor. And more broadly speaking, what this means is that you can represent the behavior of a linear circuit with a line, unsurprisingly. So I'm going to begin this video with the graphical representation of the behavior of my Thevenin model. So let's make this axis my voltage between point A and B, and let's make this axis my current. And to help us see the behavior of this model, I'm going to add a resistor between points A and B. So let's look at the extreme of the behavior and set the resistance value to be equal to infinity. So if this resistor goes to a value of infinity, then the current that's going through my circuit, call this I, is going to be equal to zero because this infinite resistance is going to block all my current. The next thing I'm going to do is label this my ground node. And if I do that, I can call this node V Thevenin and I can call this node VA. Now that I've labeled this, let's write the Ohm's law equation for our Thevenin. And that's going to be that zero, the current, is equal to V Thevenin minus VA divided by R Thevenin. Now from this equation, the only way this is going to be equal to zero is if V Thevenin is equal to VA. And with this, we have the first point on our graph. So when I goes to zero, the voltage across A and B goes to a value of V Thevenin. So now let's go to our other extreme. Let's set the value of our resistor to be equal to zero. Now at this extreme, let's write the equation for R Thevenin again. So the current is now equal to V Thevenin minus VA divided by R Thevenin, but VA is now connected with zero ohms to my ground node. So VA is equal to zero. So this means the voltage across A and B is equal to zero, and I get a value for my current that is V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin. So we can add this point to our graph, and this is going to be V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin. And now we get this line, and we can say that this line represents the behavior of my model. So now let's look at the slope of this line. And the slope is going to be rise over run, and the rise in this case is negative V Thevenin divided by, we go from zero to V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin, so we get V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin, and this ends up canceling out to be equal to negative R Thevenin. So the slope of this line is actually the negative of this resistor value. So if we're able to create a circuit that has the same behavior, we can say that that's an equivalent model. And this is where the Norton model comes in. And what the Norton model does is instead of using a voltage source, it uses a current source. And the value we're going to give to this current source is going to be equal to this point right here on our graph. So we can say this current source is V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin, and that's going to let us get this point on our graph. But we still have to make sure that we're able to get this point as well. So if this is our equivalent node A and our equivalent node B, we have to make sure that we get that same voltage there. So one way I can make sure that I see the same potential between points A and B is if I put a resistor here, and I can give this resistor a value of R Thevenin. Because now if I analyze this circuit, we call this our ground, and this becomes VA, and we write the equation for R Thevenin, we get that the voltage VA is equal to my current V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin multiplied by the resistance R Thevenin ends up canceling, and we get that VA is equal to the same voltage V Thevenin. And based on this, we're able to satisfy both points on the graph, and this circuit is going to have the same exact behavior as the circuit on the left. And this model is called the Norton model, and it's used in the same exact way as the Thevenin model. But instead of representing the circuit with a voltage source and an equivalent series resistance, you can represent the same circuit with a current source and a parallel equivalent resistance. And you can actually move between these models pretty easily, because this resistance is the same as this one over here, and the current in this model is just the Thevenin voltage divided by that same resistor over here. So once you find the Thevenin model, it's very easy to transfer that to the Norton model. With this idea, you can go from a voltage source with a series resistance to a current source with a parallel resistance, and vice versa. You can even apply this when there's other components connected to your circuit. So for instance, if we take this circuit right here, where I have a voltage source with a series resistance, I can actually redraw this circuit with a current source and a parallel resistance. In the same way, I can say that this current source has a value of 4 volts divided by 2 ohms, connected in parallel to the same 2 ohm resistor, and then connected in the same way to the other components. And these two circuits are exactly equivalent. Now you can analyze either one of these circuits without going through the extra step of source transformation, but it's a good concept to be familiar with and a good option to have. And that is all there is to source transformation. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.